All right, let me get you on my screen too. I'm not actually live at the moment. I am not live till six, so I wanted to jump okay. on. And in honor of the stream, I am wearing, there you guys go. Very the good. Make America Very Great Again <laughs> shirt that I literally only was wearing because like I said, I was gonna be going live at six, threw this one on, and then I just tuned into your guys' stream and hear uh, the other girl saying that I became super emotional. And then of course I saw your video today. So I don't know, where, where do you, where do you wanna start? What do you wanna talk about? What the hell happened? Hold on, hold on, Stas, and let me let me handle this. I want to know what happened because I researched you beforehand, and I said, okay, this guy likes to sling shit. So I said, let me go into this, hoping for a nice civil conversation. And at the end of the conversation, I literally told Stas, and I said, I don't know what the hell happened, but that went a lot better than what I thought. And then I held my breath. Less than 24 hours later. You got something on TikTok. Look at this conservative something, something. I don't know. I mean, it was a funny part. It was a funny clip. And then you, but you accused me. Can but I, it, Can I respond? Can I Would also, like please? Can I respond? Absolutely. Too? When I'm done talking. Okay. So okay. You Do you think something. you look good in that right, right uh, now? But uh, okay. okay. <laughs> you don't. Okay. This is clearly we're off to a great start. This is. Exactly I mean, you're being super condescending. About. You, you say that I don't let you talk and then you're not letting okay. me talk. So it's okay. just. I'm, gonna, I'm about to mute your ass in a second. <laughs> oh She's Whoa, furious. Give me a wow. All right. Let's try it again. Let's take it from the top. We got this. We got it. We can figure this out. Here we go. Welcome back. Welcome back, Hunter. Welcome back. You good? You cooled off? I'm trying to have a conversation with you, and it's rather difficult. But it's please not continue. It's to have a conversation if you keep interrupting people. Well, okay, go ahead. Please make your okay. continue making your point. Thank you so much. So, anyways, as I was saying, less than 24 hours later, you go on TikTok, you splice things together, and you call me a conservative, and that tells me you don't know me. You don't know my positions. You don't know my arguments because I have never, in the existence of making YouTube content, referred to me as a conservative. So, how are you coming to that conclusion, Hunter? Sure. So based on your video that you made about identity, I have no responsibility to validate your identity or the way that you perceive yourself. Also, you should really not be taking any, uh, you know, confidence in how other people are referring to you. After all, this is exactly what you said in your video about identity when it came to trans people. You said it's not my responsibility to validate anyone else's identity or how they perceive themselves and respect their labels. And I would say the same to you then. So I'll call you a conservative or really whatever I want, because, again, what you said is it's no one's responsibility responsibility to validate another person and it's not my uh, responsibility to validate you second of all you lied in your video or not I'm sorry not in your video but you claimed that I deceptively edited that TikTok when I did not I simply shortened it down because I can only post three minutes but I watched the full clip first to make sure and I left out no context everything that was shown on TikTok was completely accurate Okay, well, uh, that's a lie, uh, but let's go back. I How is it a lie? I want to touch, the, hold on. I want to touch I'll get there. on the fact that you said it is not my job to represent you or, or whatever. First of all, I think you're getting the term rep, in, I think you're getting the term validation and misrepresenting as well as encouraging different. Because I saw your little argument where you said that, uh, well, you don't, you don't, uh, uh, you don't want to do this towards kids. If you have a kid, you don't want to uh, validate them. No, no, I will encourage my child. If my child says, I want to be an astronaut, I will encourage my child. I'm not going to validate their existence. You know you're alive, and we're talking about adults, grown-ass adults that want to be validated for how they identify. That ain't my job. That's no one's job. You're but asking me to do the same thing, though. To your point where you said that it's not your job, it's not your business, as someone that has a platform, and again, I am so, I am a, listen, I love capitalism, I love people making their money, doing whatever they wanna do to make your money. You obviously like the, the, the fighting aspect, that way of making money, that's not really my thing, but in any case, I would be so cognizant about how I uh, address people in a public space to not mis intentionally misrepresent them. It would be one thing. Would you misgender someone? What if they said that like they identified as a woman? What if they were biologically male, but they identified as a woman and they asked to use uh, she, her pronouns? Would you respect them? If someone, uh, no. So why not? Re respect is earned. Respect is earned. We, hello, nice to meet you. Please and thank you. That is, that is a common, the, the basic foundation 
for respect. Even in your video, though, you you acknowledged, though, excuse me, in your video, you acknowledged, though, that uh, pronoun usage was absolutely part of showing respect. You deliberately said that part of respect is saying please and thank you, ma'am. You mentioned the pronouns. You brought that in. No, no, no. Pronouns, male and female. These aren't pronouns. This is reality. Wait, ma'am is, is a pronoun. Male and male female and are female. is a sexual characteristic. And, and, and this is these are two different male things. Male and female for the re for, for all of existence. Male and females. We're at, we're adding all of these different labels to things. But this is not reality. I, well, hold on. This is this is the the disagreement that we're having here, and I think that where you're you're not quite understanding, and that's okay because I didn't understand this for a long time either. But it's not about. Uh, like, for example, trans people, OK, biological, if someone's biologically male and they identify as a woman, they do not think that their biological penis magically becomes a vagina. They are aware of the fact that they uh, differentiate a little bit biologically there. And that realization manifests itself in gender dysphoria. Gender dysphoria is the uncomfortable mental illness associated with being trans where they are painfully aware that there is a misalignment between their body and their gender identity. So no one is actually advocating to change anyone or, or no one's saying that males and females is wrong or whatnot. They're simply saying that there's a difference between sex and gender. There absolutely is. I get the, I get what you're saying. I understand that. I hear you. But we are talking about we're talking about assimilation and we're talking about acceptance. We're talking about two different things. If mm -hmm. if if I see a guy that visibly looks like a dude and he calls himself a woman, he says, "Can you please use this pronoun?" I am not at liberty to I, I am not obligated what to What if do they're that. dressed like a woman? So like it the matter. but the it medical so matter. for example, but it does. So the it medical No, who it does because the transitioning for Hold on, not you, for, but who was you transitioning for? Are you transitioning for yourself or are you are transitioning for other people? Well, you usually if you identify a certain way, usually Hold on, wait, gothics. Wait, feel comfortable. when there are people identifying a certain way, it only follows that the reason you're identifying that way is because you also wish to be identified that way by broader society, first and foremost. Second of all, the medical consensus in this issue is literally that if you are suffering from gender dysphoria, you take steps to socially transition. So this idea that some big muscular dude is just walking around saying, call me a woman or else is just very much a straw man. It does not happen very frequently. Most of the time, we just have people that are trans and they are literally following the medical advice by socially transitioning. And that's why I said in my video that pronouns are ultimately a form of utility. If someone is wearing a dress, has long hair and goes by a feminine name and wears lipstick and they're trans and they're identifying this way, it makes way more sense from a utility sense to just refer to them as a she, her, rather than there's that guy over there who's actually trans, but they're by like, that doesn't make sense. <clears throat> Let, okay, let me let me say it from this perspective. I do not give a shit what anyone identify as. I don't I don't care. Then you I don't give a shit you, what you identify as. So then I, I, it's, you shouldn't. You, you just not asked not me not to call you a conservative, and you identify I'm as politically gonna, homeless, I'm and I'm not going to respect that. I'm asking you to stop misrepresenting me. When you I stop misrepresenting say, trans people as their wrong pronouns and wrong gender, I will 100% follow your I'm wishes that as well. Argument right now, because I am friends with so many people in the trans community that I don't do care. not subscribe to this nonsense of asking people to adopt to the way that you see yourselves. The trans people that I know, I can call them a man or a woman, and they're fine. They'll not skip a beat. They'll go that's about their day. Great, so I guess. Why but... <laughs> can't that be the standard? And instead, we resort to saying that's transphobic. Well, I have a lot that of friends that are politically that you, homeless and you just shut up and listen you've been talking for the last like 15 seconds here i thought it's it was okay for me to show. <laughs> it's my show <laughs> i'm trying to i'm trying to get I, I, i'm trying to meet you midway honestly honestly hunter i don't like this back and forth i really really don't i have never made a video dedicated to one specific youtuber i have been on the defense since i started making content i that's do cool. not enjoy this this is not productive can i okay well if you want me to leave that's fine but can you I just no. you leave. well you just said <laughs> you didn't like this conversation so what am i supposed to take no. from this i also wanted to ask can star sand how how she thinks that I have become far more emotional since walking away from the right. My positions have only uh, largely grown in like uh, basis in like uh, uh, empirical evidence and whatnot. So I would like to know how I am more emotional now. 
Here's what I will tell you first, Hunter. I followed you a long time ago, um, back when I was much less noticing of what is on YouTube. I'm going to uh, clarify a few things. What you're misunderstanding about what Gothics is saying, and even Gothics and I don't agree to a total point on this, is she's not saying she will refuse point blank to ever refer to someone as a preferred pronouns. What she's saying is she is not going to give that respect to someone that she neither knows and that doesn't know her and will just walk up to her and say, you have to address me like this because it makes me feel good. I don't know you from a hole in the wall. And she's I saying the same thing shit. about me addressing her as conservative. No, she is not. It's a difference. What you're saying How? is that this is a conservative that you've owned. And all she's saying is, if you're going to talk about me being a conservative, this is not a conservative. I am just someone out there. But at the end of the day, we don't care what you call us. We really don't. So what are some because ideas that Gothics agrees with on the left? Gothics, what are some ideas that you agree with with the left? I would, be, I would be so happy to hear them. I don't generalize ideas on the left because I realize. And so what are some ideas that are generally lefty? So you tell me, we probably have a lot more in common than you think, but Absolutely. we're never going to get to that point if this is just, if you're going into this with the intention of making clickbait. I'm, I'm not, not trying to make clickbait. I got deleted tomorrow. I'd be Gucci. I'd be good. I'm trying to talk. I'm literally just asking. You say you're politically homeless. You don't like that. I'm calling you conservative. So I'm asking you, what are some ideas that are generally associated with the left that you associate yourself with or you agree with? You're going to have to you're going to have to let me know. I have not. I have not. Are you in favor of stronger social safety nets? Do you want stronger welfare? Do you want more? Uh, do you want a higher minimum wage? No, none of that. No. OK, do you want worker uh, owned means of production? That's like the further lefty stuff that I'm not in favor of either. But I'm yeah. just I'm trying to get a general well, idea. Worker like, owned. Do you mean like uh, uh, sorry to, to interrupt? Do you mean like uh, more unions or do you mean like where the workers are more private business instead of big business? Wait, can you, I'm sorry, can you repeat that question? Okay, so when you say more worker-owned businesses, mm. are you meaning more like they have more stock? Like they own stock in the business? No, no, no. Do you no, mean no. So, they're unionized? Yeah. Or do you mean that they actually own the business? Talking about I, communism? So, so there's, there's the, so what I am, I'm a social democrat. So I believe in stronger social safety nets. Uh, we can basically just look at like other countries and see where they have stronger social safety nets. Uh, universal health care, uh, stronger welfare, uh, a UBI would be great. Um, we see a larger and more efficient econ uh, level of economic mobility in other countries that tend to adopt these policies. So I'm a social democrat. However, a further left idea, which I do not uh, subscribe to is that the workers should own the means of production. And what that means is that, yes, they don't just own stock. There's not just strong unions. I'm in favor of strong unions. They actually like would seize the means of production from the owner. And then they would all begin to like take a share based on how much work they put into that company. Okay. So then, so I have the idea concrete in my head. So that means like, let's say I owned a business and you and Gothics were my workers. Mm -hmm. And both of you were on my production line. Let's say you're building teddy bears mm -hmm. and uh, you have both decided that uh, Hunter, you're going to own the stuffing of the teddy bears and Gothics, you're going to own the outer shell of the teddy bears. And I no longer get the right to them because you have decided on your own. That is yours now. Well, and yeah, I, I don't agree with this at all. It. This I was no, just but I'm asking. I'm trying to get the idea. Yeah, I, but, I, okay. I, but if that's the case, I'm not for that either. Yeah, so, no. OK, so, so we, that would be something we do agree on. OK, sure. I'm just I'm trying to think of like what ideas are or what positions are generally answer. seen as like a little bit more left liberal. Let me, like, let, let, so let for, me put it this way. Go ahead. Let me put it this way. There's probably a lot more policies and ideas that I agreed with when I was on the left, but I did not ask enough questions. Like, for example, if you had asked me before I walked away from the left, I would have said I'm in favor for more welfare. But now understanding what it's done, especially to the black community and how people are stuck in that cycle, I am absolutely not in favor of that. Sure. So there that might be something we could agree with. So do you believe in any element of like systemic racism? Like if there is a policy like welfare that's disproportionately negatively impacting black people, that would be a like sign of systemic racism. So would you agree with like that element? I mean, we might be able to find some common ground there. No, I'm going to have to decline on that because systemic Racism in particular, the I, if we just take away the words, take away the, the meaning of systemic racism, it's this idea that this is somehow preventing someone of doing something. It, it, but it's not. We all have personal choices. And, and I know people like to say, pick, you know, roll up your bootstraps, do whatever. If that's the term we got to use, that's a term we got to use. But I mm -hmm. 
I have people in my family that have dealt with racism, but you don't hear about it. They just do the thing. Sure. Uh, and I, I so, actually yeah. would agree. So I would agree with you there, but I think that we might still be able to find common ground. So let, try, let me try to explain this really quick. So it's... It, this doesn't have to be a dichotomy. So it's not actually systemic racism versus um, pull yourself up by the bootstraps. I believe that, I mean, let's look around in this country that we live in. There are systems, quote unquote, uh, uh, in every facet of life, more or less, right? We have the criminal justice system. That's the system that we go through if we're being prosecuted for a crime or whatever. We're all sort of a product, more or less, of the systems around us. So I agree with you that within these systems, absolutely you should work to quote unquote pull yourself up by the bootstraps work as hard as you possibly can to maximize your outcomes however the systems in place you don't always have uh, individual control over that so when we're talking about personal responsibility that's something that needs to be instilled on a family level that's not really something that the government can necessarily do what the government can do as far as policy is provide stronger social safety nets and whatnot. And with that also, we can talk about systemic racism and how that manifests itself. And again, I just wanna be crystal clear. When I'm talking about systemic racism, I am not saying that black people are incapable of doing anything because racism is in their way. I'm simply saying that there are actually systems in place that have been empirically proven to disproportionately negative, negatively affect uh, black people. And we can fix that without needing to talk about like, or without even ever bringing up like white people bad or black people can't do it or whatever. Can you give me an example of like a system? Oh yeah, absolutely. So the criminal justice system is a very clear cut one about uh, basically when we look at like um, I mean, even if we want to go to like, uh, uh, so police violence, we talk about this a lot. And I know the response to that is, well, black people commit more crime. And the, I would say, yeah, that's true. But why do black people commit more crime? And it's because they are in communities that are disproportionately poor and with poverty comes more crime. It's absolutely true that you can't deny this. This is an empirically proven fact. And the reason they are in these disproportionately poor areas is due to policies in the past, like redlining, that forced black people into uh, less than ideal communities and deprived them of being able to actually build equity in this like amazing country at the time. They were prohibited from doing that. And we all can recognize how policies can have generational impacts. This is still hurting the black community today. Okay, respectfully, you are making a generalized statement about the black community when you say that. No, I'm I not. I grew up. I am not. I grew up in the hood and I have a cousin right now that is incarcerated for several things. And he was in a good family family members, entrepreneurs, he got caught up in the wrong friend group mm -hmm. and did stuff because he wanted to be cool. Was and there like I gang violence and stuff? Over, yes. Right, over so. Over and over and over and over but, again. I'll see this. They, in, they inject themselves into that through means of culture. It's not something that is, here is this area of black people in crime. Yeah, let's get to the bottom of that. Why is it that crime is so high why are crimes getting committed why are crimes getting committed mm -hmm. in the first place i've been listen i've been laid off i've had negative balance in my checking account i've had some uh terrible living situations i've never stabbed nobody i've never killed nobody i'm not asking I about your per i'm not asking about your personal experience necessarily because i can't speak I get, to that but that. i'm also not generalizing anything it is an empirically proven fact that black people disproportionately live in poverty that does not mean that all black people live in poverty why? that doesn't mean that just if someone is why? black they live in poverty I just why? explained to you the reason why no. is due to, uh, yes, largely policies like redlining and the drug war. So, for example, we have the policy of the drug war, which was made, which was implemented with explicit intent to screw over the black community. That is what Nixon said. He said we couldn't make it be illegal to be black, but we could associate the blacks with crack cocaine and heavily criminal criminalize the cocaine. So when we talk about like the fatherlessness issue in these black communities, part of that is due to the fact that a bunch of black people are being disproportionately locked up for rather minor drug offenses. <laughs> this tears families apart again. No, I'm sorry. You know what tears? It's not just culture. And why do they have that culture? 
what tears families apart is the enabling of that bad behavior. We are talking about people that are committing crimes and then saying that they get screwed over. You committed That's not a what crime. they're saying. You gotta own up they're, to but it. But they're not saying that, first of all. They're and not- also, I, I, hold on. I gotta push back also. You just said something about that, uh, that the reason that people are in poverty is because of something dealing with the, whatever. There, I'm gonna go look this up. I don't know exactly what the uh, how they label the stats, but there is something that you can find data on this where it shows you that black people in America rank the lowest when it comes to financial maintenance, when it comes to uh, opening mm -hmm. up a savings account, building yes. credit, things like that. Yes. and they spend more on physical goods. But why is jewelry, that? Cool no, but cars. but why? But why do they do this? It's like they la it's exactly. almost as if sometimes disproportionately they lack the education on how to better handle money. And when you okay. lack that educate these but you lack education because you're living in poverty and the local schools are funded by your tax dollars. So when you're living in poverty, you also get a lesser education, which leads you to put you in a situation where you're more likely to make those situations or make those uh, decisions. Also, okay. just really quick, people in your chat keep saying it's culture. There can be a cultural element to it. But again, we would have to ask why that culture is. And secondly, where people say I'm a white messiah or trying to educate a black woman. Very nice identity politics, guys. Uh, but it's, anyway, it's, it's, I get what they're saying, because you have to understand the irony of a of a white man telling me these things. No, they you're have, you're invoking identity politics. These things in my you're invoking identity politics right now. To me telling me that's because not true. It doesn't matter. You're, you're but this is what you're doing is the equivalent of someone telling me I can't have an opinion because I'm white. I did not say that. You're you saying that it's opinion. ironic that I'm white telling a black person opinion. about something. You're invoking okay. identity politics right now. OK, in any case. Uh, your argument is that because of all of these systems, uh, these things are in place. This is why it is affecting black people disproportionately. But also you did say that this type of thing, in order to fix it, has to do with being in the home. It starts in the home, right? Is that what you were saying earlier? Well, when it comes to personal responsibility, that's something that needs to be fixed within the home. But when we're actually talking about opportunity and these communities largely lack opportunity, we're talking about policies like investing money to try to build up businesses. A rough idea I thought of is like incentivizing businesses to uh, establish there. Trump actually, unfortunately, it didn't quite work out as well as it could have. But Trump, credit to him, he had a really good idea called, um, I think they were called, there, there were opportunity zones where he was yep. incentivizing businesses that could go in these black communities. And although it ended up not quite working out how it was supposed to, the idea was 100% there. So there are policies that we can take to fix these issues on a broad sense. And then there's an individual way that we can fix these issues within the family. But the government and policy, that doesn't really mesh with the family very often. Usually it's the government trying to make like a broader policy, right, to, to affect large groups of people. I just don't understand how you're expecting that something, if you're saying that I believe uh, personal responsibility is like the tip top, like the creme de la creme of, of, of something that someone would need to succeed in life. Mm -hmm. And if that is, is, is not being taught in the home, I don't think there is any policy, no movement, no nothing that will be able to force someone in order to have that personal responsibility sure. until you actually address the problem. And my frustration, to make it very clear, comes from when I deal with people who does not have that that real life experience and and i have seen these things growing up and telling me that this is something that can be fixed on a societal level or on a system level when i know that some people simply don't have that ability to self-reflect or use personal responsibility okay. and you're making it more difficult <laughs> well the couple things is when you invoke your lived experience again that is by definition identity politics it's not bad if you want to bring in identity politics but you should just admit that it's identity politics what do you what are you basing your position on what do you mean if so I'm, my lived experience as a black woman and what I'm I don't saying base to my stuff on black American culture. What are you basing your positions on? I don't ba I don't need to base it anything on my like personal experience. Rather, I'm able to base it on looking at like from a policy level. Again, I'm not trying to tell black people that they need to just go like do better or whatever. I'm, I'm talking about broad policy again. So I want to lay out an, a, an example for you. So I agree that having the drive to go out and work for 
uh, what like the best outcome you can get in this life is absolutely important. And that is a value that should be instilled in the home. But let me lay out a scenario. Let's say in the home, there's the mom and the dad and they instill these values that say you need to work really hard. You need to do as best you possibly can. OK, and then their child goes out and maybe they're living in one of these poor communities. And then you know what would happen? They go and apply for a job. And you know what? If they have a black sounding name, I'm sure you've heard this study brought up repeatedly. It's come up multiple times. It's been replicated a couple of times too. Black sounding names are less likely to get callbacks when they apply for jobs. So that right there is a way that bias can affect black people, even if they are working, like you said, taking personal experience, doing the or taking personal responsibility, doing the absolute best thing they can possibly do they could still run into roadblocks outside of their control due to systemic racism. Again, it's not a dichotomy. Rather, it's just work as hard as you can and let's also address some of these systemic inequalities. I don't believe that someone is doing the best as they can if they stop at my name sounded like an ethnic name and I didn't get a job. That wasn't how it was my done. That wasn't how. Okay. So that would have been invoked. First of all, you shouldn't shit on that because that would have been using a personal experience. And that's what you just tried to use with, on me. You can Second me of finished, I'd be able to finish my argument. Well, OK, go ahead. Thank you so much. This is going great. No, the snark uh, isn't really helping, but it's OK. You know what? It's that Puerto Rican and Cape Verdean. I just got to use my identity politics when I can. It is what it is. <laughs> OK, uh, so. I fucking had a brain fart. This we were talking about like the call thing and your chat said this. Can, can I step in? Can well, step yes, in? just really quick. I want to address someone said that study was done like a decade ago. Two really quick things. One, you're right. It was done a decade ago and then it was replicated again and then again. So it's been done actually three different times. Second of all, it wasn't just one experience or whatever. It was actually a controlled study where they sent out resumes that were identical. And the only thing that was different was a black sounding name. And the black sounding names were significantly less likely to get a call back. People are saying I sound like a racist. Again, we're pulling the hunters talking about stats that makes him racist card. Not sure what the point of that is. But again, I just wanted to address that really quickly. Hold on. I, do, I remember. Hold on. Star sign. I just remembered what I was going to say. OK, so. Uh, <laughs> OK, uh, back to the black sounding name. My point was my point that I was making is that I often hear that as an argument about black people being disproportionately uh, whatever. Uh, I look at that as an excuse. If we're talking about pulling up your bootstraps and, and persevering and overcoming adversity, my first thought is why the hell would anyone want to work for a job that wanted to discriminate because of your name anyway? And they shouldn't also, be though. Also, I would even go as far as saying there's other jobs out there. There's other things to do. A common argument that I hear, for example, on the topic of if we think about hate speech, for example, what if somebody's working for a racist job? Why the hell would you want to work for a racist boss anyway? Well, there, there are laws against that. Like, yeah, you, you definitely it shouldn't be. But... There's laws against it. My point being taking having the choice to make your choice in life. I didn't say that life was going to be easy or nice and everyone's not going to be mean to one another. I said that that is the reality that people will always be. mean. But to don't one you? Another. Well, yeah, but and don't you think it's lame that people are not able to? It is uh, isn't it, it is lame, lame that people, if they're cursed with a black sounding name, they're suddenly like less likely to get hired in certain aspects? Like that's yeah, a way. That's, that sucks. But that's, that's a sucks. way. So that's a way that black people are specifically disadvantaged compared to white people. That would be I, systemic racism. You're conceding my point right now. That's that sucks. That sucks. How bad do you want the job? OK, so then you're just living that's in denial again, which How is so. Want? So no, you realize what you're saying, which is no matter what happens, it's just on How them to do, do better. It's just on them to do better no matter what, which is unrealistic. Ultimately, when we're talking about broad systems, I already conceded that they should do as well as they can. But if you're being discriminated against simply because your name sounds ethnic or whatever, that is absolutely a way that black people are disadvantaged compared to white people. And that would be systemic racism. Correlation okay. doesn't equal causation. I never said it did. But again, there was a significant decrease there. It was far more than just correlation. All I'm saying is that systemic racism or not, this conversation, the, the, the semantics of what is occurring in society, the systemic racism, because I just get, I just put it bluntly, how bad do they want the job? But they're My not even getting interviewed. This country when she was really young, but they're she not had getting multiple jobs, single parent, probably dealt with a lot of bullshit and somehow she was able to make it. So how bad do you but want the job? But it doesn't matter because they're not even getting interviewed. They're not getting called in even initially. No, 
Yeah, no, because they have an ethnic sounding name. That's what I just oh, yeah. said. All, all, all of the interviews, they couldn't get any of Is them. that what I said is all of them? I was, I'm talking you about disproportionates. I'm talking about disproportionate. A disproportionate way that black people are negatively affected. Okay. If they're unable to even get a call in to do an initial interview, you can't use the how Sorry, bad do you want the job that, thing. With all due respect, you're making black people sound very disabled right now. You I are. You're the one. No, you are. That. You realize no, that. No, no, no. I'm saying that. People, no, because I'm actually saying that there are them. systems in place that are disadvantaging, disadvantaging black people. And you're saying, well, it's true that black people are disproportionately in these negative circumstances, but that's because they're just fucked up. That's what no, you're no, no, saying no, no, right no, no, now. No, 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 I did not say that. I said, let's go with it. If you think this is the reality, if your reality is black people are disproportionately uh, have a disadvantage, what now? That is the point that I'm trying I to I told make. you. We, well, what now? First, we need to come to an agreement that that's actually a reality. And so far, we're not even sure. able to get past that point. Sure. Next. Okay, great. So then we need to actually start looking at policy. So for example, Joe Biden's doing something I really agree with, which is investing $2.5 billion into a specific black community that was torn apart by a highway that was installed. This is an, a good example of systemic racism, where again, this was not anything that was intended to fuck over black people. It was just putting up a highway. But in doing so, they disproportionately negatively impacted black people, which makes it a system negatively impacting black people. That is systemic racism. And the way that we fix that is to further invest in those communities. Again, provide okay. jobs, provide Can businesses. Can you give me a more general, uh, uh, something more general, because that affects a very small percentage. I don't know how many people live near that bridge. So a more well, yeah, general... again, it's, it's kind of the idea of investing in these communities and not just throwing money at them, not just giving every everybody money, but rather investing in these communities like I brought up uh, incentivizing businesses to actually go in these communities, which would provide jobs. Um, I, I mean, I'm not a policymaker, so I have like some broad ideas and understandings of how we can ameliorate these flaws. But again, it's going to really come down to first and foremost, we have to be willing to agree that this problem even exists. Okay, you didn't really give me any examples. I'm just going to say that. Uh, and, and I and I would hope that you would have those examples prepared. Wait, if you're telling me that my anecdotal evidence of my lived experiences don't mean anything. And you're telling me that we need to start changing things on a policy level and you give you give me an example about some bridge somewhere. It was a highway and it was a specific example of where a policy was implemented that okay. went right along the line of what I was advocating for in the broader community. That was a complete and, and total direct answer to your question. OK. okay. And you're talking about going into these communities and investing. You're saying not to throw money at them, but investing. And you don't really know what that looks like. And the only thing that I can I can really go. I mean, that's what you're saying. You don't you don't you don't you're not familiar with policy. Just saying go back into these communities and invest. But what is that going to do if we're not teaching people personal responsibility? Like well, you said, again, we we can also do that. But you ask me for a policy and I already told you there's not going to be a personal responsibility policy. Another policy we could work on, too, is getting rid of the drug war so we could decriminalize drugs. OK, we can decriminalize drugs. OK, but that's not going to stop people from taking the drugs. That's not. Gonna I know it's not, but it's going to stop people getting arrested for taking the drugs, which is going to stop tearing up communities partially. And then also what that would do is it would cut out the need for gangs and drug cartels, which oftentimes, again, uh, infiltrates these black communities since they're already disproportionately poor and ad more adversarial with the police. So there's various different policies that we can we can look at. I just gave you two, though, off the top of my head. So I don't think it's fair for you to say that I don't have any policies. OK, I. Oh, well, that was good. Thank you, Hunter. Thank you. I'm just going to leave it at that. I, um, okay. Well, you yeah. Know, I, uh, I, uh, there was someone yeah. else in the comments that said something I wanted to, uh, the, oh yeah, that racism requires intent. No, it doesn't. That's why we're, we differentiate between personal, interpersonal racism and systemic racism. So again, the way I define systemic racism is a system that negatively impacts, uh, a racial group disproportionately. So you could even argue that the welfare state is systemic racism because it wasn't supposed to be racist, but it gave or uh, it negatively impacted the black community. So that would be an example of, quote unquote, systemic racism from the Democrat side. OK. All right. Um, can I talk fine. to stars, Don, really quickly? Just yeah, I you can talk. You guys want to duke it out? You want to get on here, Starsen? Do your thing? Because 
Yeah, the main thing I had, Hunter, when you asked about snarkiness earlier. It was you said I was if, emotional. That's what I wanted to ask you. Yes, how I'm but emotional. I'm gonna and I'm gonna get to that. I'm gonna get to that with this point right here. You came into that debate ready to attack gothics. Whether you want to admit it or not, that was your aim. The first thing you did was talk down to her, demean her, Where? and then misquote something in the debate. I'm gonna get there. You have a habit of interrupting, please do not. Here's what I will tell you. I looked up the, com the uh, information you gave. You gave wrong information on both, you played semantics, and you cherry-picked the information. Which info? The Mr. Potato Head, mm -hmm. she was correct. Earlier in the day, and I put them on there, you can go look, CNN and BBC, both reported on it. Hasbro said, point blank, in the mm -hmm. beginning, they were getting rid of Mr. and Mr. They, that was their thing. Mr. and Mrs. were going away for a more gender neutral. I provided screenshots and I provided the links on the initial tweet where she first saw you tweet about her. So that's the first that, thing. Wait, so wait, 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 wait. I need to respond wait, to this. I'm not done yet. Please, I'm I need to. Because you, you have to wait. I know it, you're biting at the chomp, but you got to wait. Um, here's what I will tell you. Later in the day, after they saw the whole backlash of where the money was going to come from, they were like, oh, Hold on, guys. It's just the umbrella. We're not getting rid of Mr. and Mrs. The first initial thing they told everyone was, yeah, we're getting rid of it. We want everyone to be their most authentic self. We're going to have empty spuds with just 42 accessories, and that's how it's going to be. Is that what they and said? And afterwards, that is what they said. That is a direct quote from CNN. I have it up on there, and I can even put that little thing right up on here if you'd like. So to then it was and gothics having old information, right? So... It, it was that's what I, was I mean, say, I'm reading right, right here that they know because what they wanted to do yes. is it is becoming, quote unquote, gender neutral, I guess, if you want to say that. But yes. they still that's kept the said. Mr. and Mrs. And she said she was wrong. No, because yeah, she wait, 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 wait. She did not. No, because she didn't just say, oh, well, they were changing this and that was it. It was that she said this was some queer theory or some like indoctrination of children. And that also and was would wrong. You call gender neutral if not part of queer theory. It's not indoctrinating children. Okay, so it is when you start giving it as children's toys. Well, it's not because it's named Mr. Potato Head and they kept the Mr. and Mrs. So I they did not until they realized the money wouldn't be there. And so that is my first point. The second point is you <sighs> misrepresented the Dr. Seuss inf incident. That actually initially started in 2017 when Melania Trump donated a mural to a uh, library and mm -hmm. the librarian on staff looked the mural I will admit, I identified a few negligible things, mm -hmm. and they were very racist for the time frame of mm -hmm. now, but not when they came out. Well, and sure, the, yeah. Yes, and then nothing was said about it, even though the, the company made no notice until it was financially good for them to do. So that's my point. It's Wait. not that they initially realized it once the Asian hate came out. They were brought up about it four years prior and I, I know. So I'm aware that the books had before. controversy like surrounding them at times. Sure. But okay. Gothic's claim was that there was this mob that came out and then they changed it under pressure. And that is not what happened. There was and not. A, it was, there was. was hold on. There was some. Con there was some controversy and backlash, maybe at some point or another. But again, you said it initially started in 2017. There wasn't a lot of backlash. And then they changed it three years later. How was this mob like? That, how is this because mob cancel culture? About was that one online? Whether it's a small mob or a large mob, you wanted her to identify a mob that you wanted her to pick up individual no, tweets. Yes. No, I'm, I'm not. I, I think that we're missing each other here because that's that is not what I was asking her to do. She said that there was a mob that caused this to happen. And that was a, that was a result of cancel culture. And I'm simply and I was simply saying that's not the case. Maybe the books were controversial at a time. Of course, they did contain outdated imagery, but they said the company. The foundation deliberately said that they consulted experts and teachers, and that's when they made the decision. And this just happened. Yes, it happened. And your claim was they did it directly in relation to Asian hate. No, they waited till it was most profitable to do it. And my point is, Hunter, how do you know I'm that? How do you know that they waited till it was most profitable? You just look at because it's clearly obvious. And my point is this you they came into the debate for overarching generalized themes about cultural appropriation and you hyper focused on two small issues and you you can't get mad at me for calling out missing
Yes, I can. When your entire purpose is to try to make her look stupid and you couldn't the, even quote it right. OK, that first of all, point. I did quote it. I read both the articles during the debate and I just read it to you also. Second of all, I didn't get a chance to a point where it happened. There was never a point where it was gender neutral. And you even said she was wrong on it. So I, I said that she right was wrong she about was it, not. indoctrinating kids and being queer theory and that it was actually they just got rid of the umbrella name, Mr. Potato Head. It became neutral or whatever. And then they had a Mr. and Mrs. Potato Head. And also, I wanted to I there was another thing also I wanted to mention, too, that, that Gothic said, because Gothic's mentioned that you wouldn't be a problem if they got rid of a book that was from the 50s that no one was really buying anymore. But that was literally then what you made the argument with the Dr. Seuss I thing. I never said that. I never said You said, said if they canceled. The brought up Dr. Seuss. No, no, no. no, no, no. I said you that said that book they... had not been purchased. I don't think any book. You said if they canceled a book that was from the 40s that no one was reading, that wouldn't really be that big of a deal. And then you told me that the Dr. Seuss books oh. didn't have any sales. That's not what I said. I said my point was my point that I was trying to make is, again, I don't care about the semantics, what the reason was of why they got rid of it. I'm looking at the the cause and the consequence, what happened as a result and how it connects to everything else. That's why I said it has to do with indoctrination. And it would it, to, to you, you would have to take that initiative to want to know what do I mean by that? And how was this how was this all correlated? But, but my point that I'm trying to make is that that thing with the, the the mr potato head and all that stuff i don't care about what's happening i just care about like the the obvious patterns like what it why is it happening and well because I you're trying to make it into this like marxist <laughs> big like overarching thing but about how there's the like the marxisms entwined to everything or whatever how but you, how much do you honestly how much and i'm not trying to be mean i'm not trying to be condescending how much do you know about marxism like not very I much i don't I follow think, marxism but also i reject say, the idea that everything that like gender neutral educating yourself that this because i don't false. need to be educated on marxism to recognize that anti-racism and uh, accepting LGBT people is not a Marxist thing. But anyway, I mean, I thought that I just wanted to ask. I, I thought that you wanted for personally. I thought that you wanted to wrap this conversation up. I'm fine if you I want do. to keep on talking. But I, I just I, wanted I to know from Star Sam slide, how I wanted to come to a middle ground. But I don't think we're going to do that. Well, I mean, yeah, your chat's accusing me of pushing agendas on children again, telling kids the no, truth no and the facts about uh, and the Listen. facts about like uh, gender and sex um, at, at, like at an appropriate age okay. is not a bad thing. It's not indoctrinated and not indoctrination. So. OK, anti-racism is racist. <laughs> read the read what's in anti-racism. It is so unbelievably racist and it's so unbelievably divisive and it's. I know that you're doing things out of the kindness of your heart. I know you are trying to be a good person. I do not believe you're just a jerk on YouTube. I refuse to believe that. But uh, what I'm telling you is, is that you you are not at in a position to say that this is false when it talks when I'm responding about uh, Marxism when you do not fully grasp what Marxism is. I don't again. I don't need to fully grasp what Marxism you is to have conversations about systemic racism or LGBT acceptance. Ooh. No, because when you come on here and say things like, oh, the Mr. Potato thing is a Marxist tactic, that just sounds like a fucking delusion at that point, honestly. But either way, I appreciate the conversation. I'm sorry we weren't able to get to more common ground. Uh, also, thanks, Starson, for the convo. Sorry that I've uh, apparently become super emotional by consistently citing studies. But either way, yeah, I guess have a good rest of your time, guys. You too, Hunter. I'm going to go you talk too. to Karl Marx. See you. All right, have fun.